Seymour Rex, when I was writing this website on the Yiddish Theater for NYU, I uh, opened up the phone book, looked around, found the listing for the Hebrew Actors Union, and called it up. He answered the phone, he agreed to meet. He was the last president of the Hebrew Actors Union. And so I knew him in his 80s. He was fantastic, you know, he could, he had to like you, you know? I mean, everybody has to like you to want to share what they know with you. Um, he would wear this battered cream raincoat and he had a Greek fisherman's cap and he had white hair and, uh, you know, he would come in with a bottle of scotch in one hand and a, you know, a briefcase of music in the other, you know? That's how I remember him. And he was very willing to talk to people who knew what they were talking about and who had respect for the Yiddish theater and respect for the Yiddish language and were willing to do their research and willing to do their work. You know, Mandy Patinkin came and um, uh, Seymour advised him and gave him some of Miriam's translations and things. And uh, they did a beautiful, Henry Sapozny did a beautiful series about him uh, for NPR, the Yiddish Radio Project. So he liked people doing real work, um, but he was very protective of his material and of people taking it or misusing it. His apartment was on one university place and he and his wife Miriam Cresson had taken it over from Molly Peacock. It was just filled with archives, like reel-to-reel -reel tapes, like th thousands of reel-to-reel -reel tapes and scripts and um, sheet music and the photographs of him with Jackie Mason and Isaac Bashevis Singer and he taught me everything that I know about the Yiddish musical theater because he was one of the last great troubadours he's the most incredible voice you can listen to it on Spotify I mean really and his voice was that beautiful very inspiring and they just did extraordinary work world class so it was a it was a great honor to to know him and to have him teach me about musical theater. I didn't know too much about it, but you know, I remember the first song he played for me. Um, he's like, who, who is this? You know, I was, like, you know, was like testing me and I'm like, it's you, it's your voice, it's incredible. And he's like, ah, of course it's me. Who is it? Who's the composer? And I was like, oh my God. And fortunately, by some fluke of gift of God, I knew it. It was A Fine Romance by Jerome Kern, because I had a, I had a cassette tape of Jerome Kern's music. I was interested in My Fair Later. So he's like, oh, OK, yeah, OK, she knows. And then so, because I answered that one question right, and I couldn't necessarily have answered too many others at that time, he started this great musical conversation with me. He would wind the tapes on his wall and sack machine. And whether he was singing or his wife was singing, Miriam Cresson or, or Maury Schwartz was speaking or A. Belstein was speaking, you would, it would be like the people were in the room with you. And he would talk about his friends and, and he would talk about the different shows that he did. But eventually he did decide to give his archives to Harvard University, um, which he did right before he died, um, thankfully. And they preserved them and digitized them. And, um, so now they exist for eternity. But he was, he knew everything. He was such a wonderful actor too. You could, you could really see the different characters come through him. You know, there was a time that in the 50s and 60s he did a lot of synthesizer work and people thought some of his stuff was cheesy. It's just interesting now, it's just the style of the moment. But he was just effortlessly talented. He would never warm up, he would just sing. Um, and he had this, just this golden voice. And he loved Frank Sinatra because Frank Sinatra, he said, told a story with his song. And he, you know, he covered most of Frank Sinatra's songs in Yiddish, also Perry Como's songs in Yiddish. In fact, they shared a piano player, uh, Dick Manning, who was Perry Como's piano player, but when he played for Seymour, he was Sam Medoff, who was the son of a famous Yiddish actor called David Medoff. So again, one of these, and everybody loved it when he, um, who wouldn't, uh, was it Irving Berlin? I, well, there were some people who didn't like people to translate their lyrics and Seymour would convince them and say, let me play this for you if you don't like it. Of course they spoke Yiddish, these major American composers, and he would most always get permission. And he worked, I knew that things were getting very bad for him when about six months before he died, maybe even less than six months, maybe four months, he lost his voice and he couldn't sing anymore and he couldn't believe it. 
just opened and it was just shocking to him and his his wife had died painfully of cancer so when he was diagnosed with cancer he refused treatment and um, he died in October 2002 um, but not before he sent off his archives and preserved his legacy.